Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about carnivorous plants. And that's what I'm holding right here, our famous bug eaters. Uh, we're just going to look at the indoor ones that I overwinter because these are tropical. They would not do well in our Northeast Ohio winters if I left it outside. But I do have a eh, modest collection of carnivorous plants that'd be fun to look at. This guy right here is a pinguicula or a butterwort. And this is kind of what prompted me to do this video because as you can see, it is full of insects. And what these do is they have a very sticky leaf that attracts bugs. These bugs in particular are fungus gnats. And I'll get these around my succulents for some reason. Uh, they just get attracted to them and it, they don't hurt the plants or anything. They kind of live in the soil and just fly around and they're just annoying. So I've hung little sticky traps that will attract them and they do their job. But I happened to notice, I don't know, three, four weeks ago that the butterworts were starting to collect the bugs. And so I thought, hey, why not move one of these closer to the succulents? Because my succulent shelves are separate from the carnivorous shelves. I thought, well, maybe I could collect some more bugs that way and kill two birds with one stone. Feed the pings, pinguiculas, and get rid of the bugs. And guess what? Boy, this guy really did his job. So what I thought I'd do is I'll take you downstairs and I'll show you my setup where I have my LED lights and um, the one shelf that has all the carnivorous plants on it. I'll kind of go through, show you the what they look like. I actually had started cleaning some up and did some propagation, so I'll show you what I did with that. And uh, we'll talk about them a little bit and then we'll come back here and wrap it all up. So let's take a walk downstairs real quick. All right, here we are in the plant layer downstairs in the basement. It's our utility room. I've got all my plant shelves set up, but this one is the first shelf has all the nepenthes on it, the pitcher plants that I've tied up. These two big ones stay down here all year long because I can't move these. They're just too gangly. But um, you can see that there's plenty of pitchers on these, which is surprising that they pitcher inside. Uh, I'd already started cleaning this up, so we're going to get back to this in a minute. Now, this is the second shelf that's got my butterworts and uh, a bladderwort, sundews. Here is a saracenia. Now, I got this one in the early part of this year, and it was totally green. And with the LED lights, it boy, it sure colored up quickly. Now, that one could stay outside. It's hardy. But now, these are the butterworts, and they are the tender ones that cannot stay outside during the wintertime. And you can see I've got a, a few different varieties. And it's interesting which ones actually attract the bugs more, those fungus gnats. Not like, um, oh, there's another little Nepenthes. I ordered this online. Look at that itty-bitty little baby. We'll see how that thing goes. It looks kind of sad right there. But there's some sundews right there. I had quite a few, but for some reason they kind of didn't do very good over the wintertime and kind of dried up couple fly traps. Those things really should be outside in the wintertime, like in, overwintered in our garage. They not, don't do that great inside, but it'll perk up in the summertime when I take them back out. There's another one of my butterworts that has a few of the fungus gnats on it, and I think I divided that one. That was a, even a bigger cluster. Now, this is a unique one. It's a bladderwort. Now, this is when I first got it back at the beginning of 2019. It was in flower, and then it spread and has more flowers. Now, what it looks like right now is just a green carpet. I think I need to transplant that and give it a little more room. Here's another variety of the butterwort, which is also collecting fungus gnats. And here we have a sundew. This one was much redder when I first got it, so let's hope it's not dying. Okay, so now we're back to that top shelf where the nepenthes are, and I'm gonna show you some um, propagation that I did, because when I had started cleaning these up, I'm like, oh, I should propagate some of these because this one big one in the back is just getting too gangly. So I'm gonna cut off one of the stems, which I did right there, left a couple leaves. And we're gonna take this over to the potting table and I cut off the bottom set of leaves so it had some leaf nodes there. I wrapped it in soaked sphagnum moss, which I had in uh, distilled water. I did not use tap water. So I wrap it, as you can see, I wring it out a little bit, wrap it in the sphagnum moss and I pack that in there and keep it nice and moist. And now I've got both of them all done and they're ready to go back into the, uh, back on that first shelf. So here's everything put back again. 
I've got a couple ferns in there. I've got a couple different nepenthes. And I'm going to show you some photos of these nepenthes when they were outside for the summertime. And they pictured gorgeously because there's different varieties. And I'm sorry, I don't have the names. But here you go. enjoyed that mini tour of my indoor carnivorous plants and the once again these are the ones I overwinter inside. I'll try to do an expanded video that shows you my Saracenia uh, trumpet pitchers which are in my little mini bog gardens and those I keep uh, in the garage in the winter time because they are a little more frost hardy but for now um, I hope you enjoyed this one and please subscribe and hit the thumbs up button if you liked it and for sure if you have any comments or questions, put those down below. Once again, thanks so much and uh, stay tuned for the next video. In the meantime, stay healthy. Mm -hmm.